Now in the round table session, you've heard views here. These are not the only views. These are not the only ways we can uh, assist in uh, uh, preventing drowning. This is not the only view we have on how to accelerate the teaching of swimming. This is not the only view we all have on very many issues. So we, and that is why we're going to call, we called it the round table. That means you will also have views. But whenever we, you're asked to speak, and if it's a question, let it be a question and not a long introduction before the question comes in. Secondly, there's no such thing as a silly question. There's no such thing as an un, uh, unintelligent question. All questions have a form of a response. What I can say, the response might not be appropriate. So it's not definitely not the question. And here, again, we will exchange views on what to do and how to do it. And also, because many of us here, we come from, not necessarily from the uh, 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 developing world. The developing world has very many issues, as uh, Justin Scar pointed out. And uh, many of the issues happen there. So what we intend doing now is we open up the discussion to you, but don't make long speeches. But if you've got any suggestions, please come forward with it. And also, if there are questions you want to ask anybody to, uh, on any one of us, how to expand certain programs, and um, we will try and give you a view. Right. So I'm certain many of you have thought about very many questions. Let's see who's going to kick it off. Right, Vladimir Smirnov, uh, himself uh, a, a Olympic gold medalist, uh, president of the Russian uh, Swimming Federation. Yeah, it's coming. Wait to hang on. Yeah, Mike, Mike. Yeah. Thank you, Vladimir. Thank you. Well, uh, maybe to help others to to get into the discussion. Uh, I would suggest that we should uh, establish certain standards in uh, every three parts of uh, Learn to Swim program. So as, uh, as far as I understood, I absolutely agree with. Uh, swimming skills are not enough, so we need to think about the, uh, the rescue, and in the middle we have to talk about the, the safety. So three stages, right, as far as I understood. So, um, I think we have to establish certain uh, standard for swimming. For instance, uh, what do we want to achieve in certain time? Yes, for, instance, uh, for instance, in Russia we have a program which is called 36 hours. It's believed to be sufficient enough to, uh, to get uh, good skills of swimming. So, at the end of this program, kids should swim 100 meters with, uh, without uh, uh, checking the time and 25 backstroke, uh, 25 freestyle, and that's it. So, as far as for safety and uh, rescue, I don't know if these standards exist, because if you if we put all together, we can have a nice package: swimming, certain hours, certain hours for uh, um, safety, and certain hours for uh, for rescue skills. So my question, do we have this type of standards? Uh, maybe uh, uh, colleagues could uh, tell that they have a certain experience in that because uh, finally we have to come up with a balanced uh, program which cover all three stages of this, uh, let's say, uh, project. Thank you, sir. Vladimir. President Maglioni, any comments on this particular point? Can you hear President Maglioni? There's a mark. There's a mark there. One, one of the program that we study with uh, detention was the program of Russia. That is a very, very important program. As I said, they study the program of United States, Switzerland, England, Spain, uh, Russia, 
Hungary, and in many countries, uh, the, the, the group received the program at, at the end understand that the more easily and more clear program is the program of Portugal, but all the countries was present in the discussion in Lausanne, in Lausanne three months ago. And uh, we go for this way. And I said, when I finish my intervention, I said, well, it's the moment that the countries that need and understand that need the program and have the support of the government that is fundamental, eh, because maintain one program of this nature, is convinced to the government that is necessary. And eh, it's the moment to begin. In. We go to receive in the future days all the countries that want that beginning to work with them. This is the idea. Thank you, President Maglioni. Justin? Thank you, Sam. Uh, I've got a few points. Thank you for the question. I think it's a very important <coughs> point. Um, certainly, there are many life-saving standards. Um, my concern about the life-saving standards, though, is that sometimes the, the level requirement is at the advanced lifesaver level. And so I was recently in Vietnam, and their national government had created a policy for swimming and water safety and the sport federation had inserted very high level life-saving skills into the swimming program and i think this is a really concerning point point. Um, and so i agree with the notion of swimming and water safety um, the sort of standards we're talking about for water safety though are, are very very basic standards and i describe them as the ability to be rescued and the ability to initiate a very safe rescue, which might be a reach rescue, it might be a throw rescue, which are commonly taught to, to, to young children, school-aged children. And so the standards do exist. Um, they certainly exist in many high-income countries. I know that the UK, Australia, the US, through, say, YMCA, um, have a very good integration of swimming and water safety. And so it may just be a matter of a literature review and seeking the advice of some people that, are, that have greater expertise in very basic swimming and water safety, such as teachers of swimming and water safety. Thank you, Justin. Anybody else? Right. May I make my contribution? Uh, as Justin was saying and uh, President Maglione said, this is a very important element. Now, in my last life, I was a school teacher uh, in the United Kingdom, and, and of course, I took part in water safety lessons there. They have a program which we are going to introduce in FINA, and FINA, FINA will pro, uh, again distribute certificates for uh, proficiency. Because as uh, Vladimir said, what is important, uh, I, if I got it right, not to know how well you can do the, uh, the crawl or the butterfly, but how well can you survive in the water. And we need to have these survival skills. And there are very many survival skills that are available, especially for those people who don't have, don't have any knowledge of swimming. And Justin put up uh, 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 some images about overloaded uh, uh, ferry, ferries. And uh, suddenly they all collapse. They don't have uh, um, uh, safety um, uh, vests with them. They don't have these drowning vests. Now these are some of the things we need to encourage. And we will definitely pick up some of those points that uh, uh, I don't know whether they're still valid in the United Kingdom, of course, as I said, this happened in my last life uh, of water safety, and maybe um, um, uh, we got uh, David Sparks here, and maybe he can explain to us. These are issues, and also what is important, not only for children, but also for adults. They would like to have a piece of paper to all, which they want to frame, they want to show to the children, they want to show to the grandchildren, look, this is what water safety is all about, and we will not only produce badges, but we will produce certificates to say, you, you have now, be, you've become a competent swimmer, competent swimmer that you can look after yourself and you can help others, because as uh, uh, Vladimir said, uh, and uh, uh, Justin emphasized, we also, adults must also know how to swim. 
because in very many places there are no lifeguards. And what do you do? What happens instead of getting one drowning, you get two drowning because the child gets into the water, he's in difficulty, the father who does not know how to swim, he's desperate, he wants to go and save his son or daughter and he drowns. So we, instead of having one drowning, we have two drownings. And these are the issues we need to attend to, what to do, how to do it, and especially, and this happens in South Africa and many parts of the world, you know, where there are safety signs, and we must encourage these particular say, safety t signs and, and how to do it. You want to uh, add any, anything to that, uh, David? Sorry, I took up David. I'm certain that there are other points in other p parts of the world. Uh, you're quite right, Sam. Uh, in, in Great Britain, uh, there's a strong commitment to teaching every child to swim and giving every child basic uh, safety advice so that they can help themselves and help others. And I think this is a, and I was involved in the birth of this program, believe it or not, that makes me an old man, I guess. Um, I think the, the important ingredient in this, Sam, is that the government obliges all schools to take children through this training program. So I think uh, FINA, what it could do is use its pressure, along with UNESCO, along with the World Health Organization, to encourage government to say that every child going through education must obtain some teaching in swimming, some water safety skills and rescue skills. Obviously, this is happening in Russia. No one wants to change the program. I'm sure they wouldn't want the British program. <laughs> we don't want the Russian program. I can assure you of that. But seriously, every nation can have its own program, but it has to be an obligation on the schools because the numbers involved, you cannot teach through the voluntary system. We looked at it very closely, and I was involved. We went and talked to the government, and we said, look at the number of children you've got in the United Kingdom. You cannot train these children unless you do it through schools. So I think we have to use our skills as, uh, if you like, ambassadors to push governments around the world to include it. And I do understand for some governments it won't be a priority, but we've got to make it a priority because it's saving children's lives. So I'm a great advocate of, let's do this through schools. I'm happy that FINA are putting standards in place. I think that's good. I'm happy that FINA are offering certificates. That's good, but we have to get governments to work with us. That's crucial to me because without them delivering, the numbers involved will be just too great for us. I hope that's helpful, Sam. Lovely. Thank you, David. That's a shortened version of his long, long speech, but very useful. But as President Maglioni emphasized, we have to work with governments, and that, that is his target, because if you don't have governments supporting us, and what we mean by governments, not necessarily at national level. We have public groupings, governments at provincial levels. We have governments at regional levels. We have governments at local levels. That is what Pro President Maglioni wants. And that is something, he's, that's his baby, and he's emphasized that particular point, and he's going to continue. Right. Any other question uh, what, or comment? Moment. Some, some, some. Only this. We consider and we take care the program of United Kingdom, as I said, in the moment, but uh, we are working and we continue working with the World Health Organization, with UNESCO. It's not the only program of the FINA. The FINA is one program that we must to share with all. Yeah? And uh, how we do at the beginning and we are doing now. And uh, 
and uh, we will continue in this way, but we must to begin in at war now. We go to receive all the proposal, the different federation and country, but it's very important the support of the government. Yeah? That we must to convince it that important that is this program. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, can, I, right. can I just add something? First, let's see, we had a question from, am I right, President of Algerian Swimming, and then after that, uh, uh, President of South African Swimming, and then we pick up the point at the, at the other end. Micro. Thank you, President. <coughs> I speak in French because um, it's so easy for me in French. Uh, Monsieur le Président, aimable assistance. Donc, euh, moi, je rejoins parfaitement le, le programme de la FINA s'agissant de sport, de, de natation pour tous. Euh, je pense qu'aujourd'hui, nous avons les ressources nécessaires pour promouvoir cette discipline à travers d'autres actions humanitaires, évidemment. Euh, et je pense passer par l'initiation à la natation sur tous ces aspects, ça reste quand même euh, incontournable pour réussir à et promouvoir cette discipline et donner euh, une autre dimension à cette discipline aussi. Aujourd'hui, je pense qu'il y a une problématique. Il y a des pays développés qui puissent assurer et suivre ce programme de manière constante et avec des moyens nécessaires. Et il y a d'autres pays, plus ou moins, qui ont des difficultés, notamment en termes d'infrastructures, notamment en termes de formation. Et c'est là où s'inscrit justement le rôle de la FINA pour pouvoir agir au sein du gouvernement, comme souligné déjà auparavant, mais notamment sur l'aspect euh, formation direct sur, les, 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 sur les, les points sensibles de la natation et de, de cette pratique. Donc je pense, ma question aujourd'hui, est-ce que la FINA va accompagner et contribuer et mettre les moyens nécessaires pour les pays, si j'ose si ose le dire, sous-développés, parce qu'aujourd'hui, comme vous savez, vous prenez par exemple l'Afrique, la, la, notre continent, cher continent, euh, nous avons des pays là où la natation est plus ou moins en difficulté, en termes d'infrastructure, je dirais. Mais par contre, ils pratiquent de la natation dans les fleuves, dans les, dans les, euh, dans les barrages, dans, les, euh, dans la mer. Donc là aussi, est-ce que la FINA va contribuer et aider ces nations-là à former et introduire un programme au niveau des, des, euh, des écoles comme cela a été, cela a été euh, souligné tout à l'heure, car je pense que les écoles, aujourd'hui, le travail, l'énorme le, 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 travail que nous devons s'accentuer dessus, c'est au niveau des écoles et euh, les institutions euh, publiques. Donc voilà, je voulais juste savoir, est-ce que la FINA a un programme spécial pour motiver ces gouvernements et ces écoles à, à prendre en charge cet aspect Merci. We will ask President Maglioni to address that issue. Well, the idea is go coming to the all countries that require Africa, Asia, America, Europe, uh, all the uh, Oceania, the five continents. The idea is to talking, to working. If we don't have the support, of the government is impossible to have to do this program in any place. We need the support of the government. In this case, as you ask about the infrastructure, we are ready to provide swimming pools for the countries that have the support of the government because the swimming pool must be have maintained, have, must to have security, must to have uh, personal, many things that FINA don't can do. FINA can provide 
because the uh, executive and the bureau approve swimming pools. Swimming pool of 25 meters, and uh, we talk with the president of the IOC, Dr. Thomas Bach, and said that he go to support our idea economically. We talk with the Sheikh Hamad Al Fahad Al Sabah, president of Olympic Solidarity. In this moment, is in license, is not working, but I am sure that he re will return, and he promised to support this idea. And in some case, the case of the Americas, the Panama Sport, the organization offering to provide money to for the program for the countries of America. And uh, I suppose that we will support a minimum two countries, two federations for year, but we need to establish very clear rules. Thank, thank you, President Baglioni. Um, Frederick? Yeah. Um, I, I just want to bounce off uh, both of the interventions, in fact. Um, we at UNESCO, we, ha we have challenges when we, when we try to uh, advocate for um, curriculum changes uh, at the national level. Um, I'm wondering if there's not some sort of uh, mixed solution between um, like sport, swimming federations um, doing non-formal education in this regard and then also um, sort of uh, inclusion in national curriculum, uh, life-saving um, and, and swimming skills. Uh, bouncing off also the, the, the sort of other aspect of, uh, of government, and you said it, Sam, as well, it's not just the national government that needs to be involved. It has to be right down to the, the municipal, the, the local municipal level, because they're the ones that will build the infrastructure. They're the ones that will actually provide um, the spaces to learn, um, training the trainers, teaching the teachers is, a, is a, an especially important um, tool in order to multiply these types of things. And if we don't have a mix of sort of formal and non-formal uh, approaches, I think, I think we're setting ourselves up for failure because at the end of the day, it's a question of, of funding. And if it's not a priority for a national government, then it certainly won't get funded. And I think we need strong advocates at all levels, but strong advocates both um, sort of uh, government advocates, but then also um, strong advocates at the, at the sort of the, 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 the level of, of why swimming is important, why life-saving is important. If we don't have those types of uh, influences of, of, uh, of efforts, we're not going to get anywhere with this program. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much, Fred. Uh, Alan, first, president of Swimming South Africa, and then we'll go to the back. Thank you, Dr. Ramsamy. Um, we certainly feel that this is a step in the right direction uh, and we fully support the endeavors by FINA. Uh, the standard setting is of course very important but I would certainly like to see as far from a standard and a safety point of view that the whole notion of child protection is addressed in policy. You are particularly aware of uh, the learn to swim, the splash polo, the rivers and dams, um, training that we do from a learn to swim perspective. I certainly think the rescue element as proposed is certainly a valuable element to look at. A big part in Africa, uh, Dr. Ramsemi, uh, from a safety point of view, you know that Africa is still a very wild place and uh, crocodiles are infested in some of our rivers. So the notion of, and I certainly support the previous speaker on the notion of having facilities that are safe to teach children to swim, governmental intervention, but certainly the support of FINA in this regard is paramount. Um, so our view is that it is a point that we have to action in terms of establishing those safe facilities, swimming pools, particularly from an African perspective. Um, there was talk earlier on of uh, a sport from FINA in this regard, particularly relating to the work that we do on the African continent. Schools, as uh, David Sparks has uh, referred to, is a critical element in the Learn to Swim program. And we must, from a global perspective, see how we can promote 
uh, governments, especially education departments, to get actively involved uh, in the Swim uh, for Life, um, Swim for All program. Thank you, President. Thank you, Alan. President, you want to emphasize that point? Okay, please. Yeah. We agree 100 percent. UNESCO, World Health Organization, our coach, the past president of CIGEP, all are in the same way, and all the bureau members and all the executive, we are in this way. It's true. Any other contribution? Arnaldo? Lo primero que hay que tener presente es la voluntad de hacer el programa. Si no hay voluntad, va a haber siempre muchos obstáculos. Y cuando hay voluntad, tenemos que convencer. Por ejemplo, hemos hablado de muchos temas diversos. Las escuelas y universidades que forman profesores de educación física deben tener en su currículum que los futuros profesores de educación física... Translation? No translation. No, no ten. Más despacio. No, no tengo traducción. No hay traducción. Translation. Okay. There's a, there's a need for willingness. There's a need for willingness. Continue. Ahí. Come on. Bien, decíamos que lo primero que tenemos que tener presente es que tiene que haber una voluntad nacional para poder lograr aplicar este programa. Le estamos dando categoría de alfabetización de la natación. ¿Por qué? Porque el desarrollo motor históricamente se ha logrado de una manera o de otra, pero el desarrollo de la natación en los seres humanos no. La mayoría no sabe nadar. Y como explicamos, son dos formas de poderse trasladarse el ser humano con su cuerpo y nadando. Y si no sabe nadar, pues tiene más de la mitad de su vida comprometida. Por ejemplo, yo decía los países del Caribe, los ciclones, los huracanes, la penetración del mar penetra de una costa a la otra, tapa la tierra. Y las personas que viven tienen que trasladarse por sus medios y si no están preparados, pues van a tener serios problemas para garantizar la vida. Y por eso es, como es un problema de seguridad nacional, como es un problema de salud, como es un problema de vida, el país lo tiene que enfrentar con, ese, con esa precisión. Porque no es, como decíamos, no es un lujo. No es que queremos o no queremos saber nadar, es que estamos obligados a saber nadar. Y si el ser humano no entiende que es necesario para su vida, entonces no lo vamos a lograr. Los profesores preparados, monitores, líderes, y si sí podemos aprovechar los ríos en los lugares donde no hay cocodrilo, y podemos aprovechar otros, otras costas, podemos aprovechar piscinas de diferentes tamaños, todo lo que nos posibilite realizar programas de enseñanza de la natación básica, puede ser elemental, puede ser un poco más compleja, pero siempre buscando la seguridad de la persona. Y los profesores, y los profesores tienen que saber enseñar, pero también deben saber socorrismo. ¿Cómo socorrer a una persona que se está ahogando? ¿Quién lo hace? No vaya a ser que delante de todos nosotros alguien se está ahogando y nadie sepa aplicarle el socorrismo. Y entonces estamos cometiendo un problema doble. No se sabe nadar y no se sabe socorrer. O sea, tenemos que educar en todo el sentido de la palabra, crear una cultura de la enseñanza de la natación. En aprenderlo para la vida es el término que queremos dejar fijo porque es una necesidad. Gracias. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Arnaldo. Uh, Justin? Uh, yes, thank you very much. I'd, I'd like to just pick up on some points made 
Uh, and I totally agree with the idea that FINA has a significant role, as do the national federations, in activating governments to prioritise swimming. Um, there are a number of governments already that have actually made policy announcements committing to swimming, um, but below the policy announcement, there is a fundamental lack of resources. So once you engage government, um, you then need to think about the ecosystem, the resources that are required to achieve the sorts of penetration of swimming skills that we're all aiming for. Um, and, and the African example, I think it's important to uh, just talk about that. Um, cro crocodiles are a great drowning prevention tool, but have some unintended consequences, right? Um, we don't want that. Um, but the continent of Africa um, has many other development challenges that, that the Africans in the room know too well. And so swimming, as much as it can be packaged as a drowning prevention device, we should also consider that it can be packaged as a social uh, uh, development. It can be packaged in a gender equality frame. It can also be packaged in a disaster risk reduction sense. So once you get governments to commit to your uh, uh, journey about compulsory swimming, um, we should also consider that if we package it in line with other development agendas, then there are resources from uh, other groups, uh, NGOs, Save the Children, UNICEF. Um, they're all running programs in the sorts of communities that we want to work in. Um, and, and I think some innovation and partnerships will help uh, sustain the FINA initiative. Um, on the point of infrastructure, I agree this is a significant barrier. And I'd certainly encourage uh, national federations to, to look at innovative ways to uh, achieve venues, safe venues, for very basic instruction of swimming and water safety. In Thailand, the government five years ago made an announcement that swimming would be compulsory for all Thai children. Once they'd made the announcement, they then had to work out how they were going to bring swimming lessons to all Thai schools. Um, and the innovation there is because Thailand has a big seafood industry, they're always growing uh, fish in these very large plastic ponds. All across Thailand in schools now, you'll find these agricultural ponds that previously were marketed for fish feeding and they're now actually with children learning to swim. So the very basic elementary level of swimming and water safety doesn't necessarily even need a fully um, uh, a 25 metre pool, there are other ways to achieve the sort of breadth of penetration and spread the resources a little bit further. But, but I certainly congratulate FINA for recognising that infrastructure will be a barrier to achieving this, uh, this, this global objective. Thank you, Justin. But in one of our previous seminars here, the president of FINA, uh, Dr. Maglioni, talked about assistant in uh, pro, uh, where FINA is going to provide assistance in areas not necessarily in building of swimming pools, which the president has now agreed, and I think he needs a great clap for that. <laughs> for pushing that idea. But he also talked about and how to help um, build safety nets uh, in open water, mm -hmm. and the president has addressed that in one of our uh, previous seminars in dams. Uh, in uh, 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 rivers that are not fast flowing, etc. They address that. Alan, one more point. You talked about um, uh, cro crocodile infested areas. You forgot to mention about sharks, uh, but I'll show you during the lunch break my scar with a shark bite. <laughs> uh, let's pick up that question right at the back there. Yes, yeah, sir. And we come back here, Dave. Afterwards, David. No, no, that one there. Sorry, I didn't get your name. No. Thank you. My name is Harder, and I come from Iceland, which is a small island in the uh, in the northern part of the globe. Um, in Iceland, we have a mandatory to to. Uh, to uh, learn swimming in, in the elementary school, and I agree with David Sparks and, and Vladimir Selnikov when they say we need to have this uh, mandatory, and we need to have some, some standards. Um, 
but we need also to to uh, look at what what we are doing and how we are doing it and and my question and my uh, uh, thoughts are how are we going to uh, how are we going to uh, follow it up because uh, I can see in, in my country which have been uh, which have been mandatory for many decades to le uh, to learn to swim from uh, six years old up to 15 years uh, that the swimming lessons are not very good they are, we are lacking experience for the teachers and so on and uh, we at the, at the swimming federation we are trying to to back up the uh, the teachers to back up the schools but we need need the governmental funding or governmental support there so we, I, what what i'm saying saying also is that we need more maybe and that's why i'm very glad that we have this conversation here in in this convention and i thank you fina for that but we need maybe to get some assistance from fina we at the uh, sophisticated swimming counties, we, which, which we have a lot of knowledge, but we need to have some support from the from the from the body of of the swimming for the world. So, uh, again, how do we uh, see we can follow up what we are starting here with, or have started with with swimming for all, swimming for life? Thank you very much. Any comments from? Just an explanation. Thank you very much. David? Thank you very much, Sam. Um, my name is David Gerard, and I'm wearing two hats. The first is that as uh, President of Swimming New Zealand and the assurance that our Federation um, President Maglioni is totally supportive of the Swimming for All, Swimming for Life campaign. The second hat is that as a, a professor of sport and exercise medicine, which has been my stock and trade for the last 30 years. What I would like to say to the panel is that we, we should make a distinction between swimming and survival skills. And I think that's a very important distinction. Could I also humbly suggest that being able to swim will not save you from a hungry crocodile? or a hungry shark. But being able to survive, I, I fully appreciate the comments made by Justin that uh, Royal Life, uh, Surf Life Saving, teach survival skills as they teach rescue skills. The second point I'm making is the lack of reference today by the panelists with a couple of exceptions of the implications for health in the Swimming for All, Swimming for Life. Uh, Professor Fuja mentioned what he termed therapeutic uh, swimming, but I would like to suggest to the panel that we should be engaging more with clinicians who can expand the elements of Swimming for All and Swimming for Life into rehabilitative medicine. After all, exercise itself is medicine and swimming provides us with a non-weight bearing medium in which conditions such as asthma and diabetes and other things can be treated. Reference was made earlier to this, but I think the committee and the group would be enhanced by the addition of clinicians to help contribute to this very, very worthwhile project. So I just pose that, Sam, as a, a challenge to the group and with a couple of observations from a country from which I come, New Zealand, with the second highest drowning rate per head of population in the OECD. So we have a vested interest in this and are very willing to contribute. Thank hey, you. Thank you, David. Any comments from anybody? President Maglioni? No, simplemente que es el programa de la FINA. No, no es, no es mi programa. Este, <laughs> y es el programa de UNESCO y es el programa de la Organización Mundial de la Salud hay excelentes programas en una cantidad de países eh, Inglaterra, Rusia, Suiza, eh, Estados Unidos yo diría que en los cinco continentes hay excelentes programas y la idea es, como lo han dicho acá, cooperar los que más tienen, los que más hechos, los que más han tenido apoyo de los gobiernos, 
Ah, estoy hablando en, en español. No, that, excuse me. No, they are very important program that, like uh, the England program, the, the Russia of United States, uh, Switzerland, Spain, many countries have Holland, I am sure, and the, the, that uh, uh, Qatar, uh, many countries have very good program. And uh, really, we are in this way. We go to cooperate and we take care, very important in the health problem. We have working, we are working with the World Health Organization that they go to finalize some program in few time and we are working with the Dr. Hohenban and the Dr. Amonjoy that are in this program. It's, it's very important. If we don't work with the World Health Organization, with UNESCO, it's impossible to do the program. And we are in this way. We are in this way. And we go to continue. But it's very important for maintaining this program because beginning can be more easily than maintained. And we need the support of the government that request this program. And we go to war with them because for that in our program is to teach the, the coach, no coach, to teach uh, uh, professors. And uh, we need that this professor and this program was accepted for the government. It's not, it's impossible to do nothing. And we need, is we provide that, we go to provide swimming pool in the country that don't have, uh, uh, le, le, uh, uh, in, it is necessary that the government maintain and working within and have the conviction that this is very important. Thank you, President. I think, again, you emphasize the issue of government, and, and I think we, we must make sure that that happens. Justin? Uh, yes, thank you, Sam. I, I'd like to concur. I totally agree with the role of clinicians in guiding um, the work of swimming. And certainly from a positive perspective, there are very many health benefits for, for swimming. Um, from a World Health Organization, though, I know that if, uh, if, if they were physically in the room, what they would like to say on this point is that there is also a downside to, of increased risk for particular children with particular conditions. Um, and so when WHO was building these guidelines, uh, there'll be an important point about screening to understand that the children in your class, for example, whether they have any pre-existing medical conditions which might increase their risk of drowning as a result of swimming. And so epilepsy would be an example um, forms of autism can also ha increase risk of drowning. Um, and so it's, it's not only the be positive benefits to health of swimming, it's also just to be mindful of the risk management side of, uh, of, of that as well. Yeah, thank you very much, Justin. To pick up what President Maglioni said, uh, we have touched on these points, David, in um, matters relating to health and safety uh, uh, issues uh, in um, uh, the, uh, Swim for All, Swim for Life. But uh, I can take this now, I'm certain that the President will agree that it would be nice for us as uh, uh, the FINA Bureau, the FINA Executive, if uh, the Medical Commission, David, can pick up this matter and, and give us some guidelines on how this must be done. As we've said, we've had uh, uh, discussions with Margot Mountboy, uh, Mountjoy in the past and certainly it will, it will continue, but most importantly, you are uh, uh, the vice chairman and together with the chairman can give us some gu guidelines on exactly what we should do, taking into consideration the elements here. Um, now we're going to Ro Ronnie first. It's coming. Right behind you, Ronnie. Is that no, the one in front of you? I sort of, I miss, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, fine. Um, thank you, Sam. Um, I'm from Hong Kong, and uh, actually for the last two years, we've uh, taught 
primary one students, 16,500 of them. But they're all not sponsored by government. It's sponsored by some private organizations. So actually, there's a few questions or points I would like to make here. All right. Um, obviously, I think if you ask the government to uh, implement something which costs a lot, I think they might have other considerations. So instead, uh, if they can just give a policy and certain flexibility so that teaching swimming can be sponsored by some uh, uh, big corporations, I think that would be uh, a, 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 a good method. I think I've thought, uh, I've sit here for so long time, I haven't seen or uh, heard any people saying, you know, cooperation with other uh, big corporations. I think that's a way out. Uh, another thing is that um, um, there's so many aspects, you know, from swimming for all, teach swimming all the way to, to, to swim for life. And then we talk about the old people swimming and then therapeutic swimming and, you know. So, but I would say 80% of these speakers, I think they talk about teaching kids. So, um, the, 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 the one question I want to ask is, the, since the program is so comprehensive, covers so many aspects, I think should we, you know, uh, have uh, set priorities for each of them? Because if there's no way if we can do everything all at one time. So I, I think that, you know, teaching swimming should be the first priority. Thank you, uh, Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you, Ronnie. Any comments from us? Right. Eric? Can we get a few more mics, if possible? Thank you, Sam. My name is Eric van Heiningen. Uh, I speak as a Dutchman representing the Netherlands. Thank you, first of all, Mr. President, for this excellent program and all these presentations. Thanks to the speakers. Thanks to Sam for the excellent presentation. All of this makes me realize again, because I knew all this, how important it is that we direct our efforts to the people who need, because to see a dead child because of drowning is a disastrous uh, impression, and all of us know this. Uh, second, uh, listening to all the different perspectives, which all of them I can agree, <coughs> I realize how difficult and how complex and how varied the world is. So one size does not fit all, that's what I think. And knowing that we have 209 members of FINA, it shows how many different solutions there are. And I just want to point out one example from the Netherlands, and we are living on some places like the West 5.5 meters below sea level. I'm living close to that. Uh, and I'm a representative of government, so nothing against government. I've been working in many different jobs. But what I realized that government n not always brings a solution, because some governments all over the world do not work. It's the Netherlands. It's in Africa. So what I would like to ask to the people at the podium is think of the parents, think of the clubs, and think of the companies just like Ronnie Wong just mentioned. And I would be interested to hear good examples of private initiatives of angry parents or angry clubs which said, if government is not bringing us solutions, I will stand up. I will stand up. And what I understand, Mr. President, that our program, OFINA, offers a variety of solutions, of means, including clubs, including the parents, to stand up and to say, we are going to work and to make sure that we do not see our children drown. So thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. Well, we agree. All the situation of the countries are different. Don't doubt. But maintain one program in, in, like in Holland? I don't know. You know perfectly what are the finance of the FINA, where going all this money, and uh, we can be sure that we can, with the more, the, the countries that more need we go to support and we go 
Du gehst wohl. I just I, I want to thank you. Uh, that was what I was advocating when I said sort of a mixed solution. Um, Public-private partnership is also an integral part of a mixed solution. Um, advocating to government at the municipal, at the provincial, and at the federal or national level is important. That gets that gets swimming uh, and life-saving on the agenda. But then implementing uh, implementing it, like you rightly said, uh, um, um, from Hong Kong. Um, it, it's costly, and so you have to find, governments need to find solutions. The municipal policymakers need to look at other ways of financing this type of a project. Building a, school, uh, building a pool uh, for each school is not a solution. Having municipal pools available to schools is part of a solution. Financing the building of schools by, par uh, by private partners could also infuse the, could also infuse the, the, the process. Teaching the teachers to teach swimming lessons and life-saving skills is part of the, the, the swimming federations. It's not part of national curriculum. It's not part of government to do that. Government should be, government should be providing the policy guidelines that then can be acted upon by others. So I, I, I think uh, very well that there are, there are um, ways that we can share um, best practices uh, at UNESCO, we, hold this, we, we have this clearinghouse, um, clearinghouse ability um, to uh, acquire, uh, acquire best practices and then to share them. We do this in our physical education and sport policies, not specific to swimming, but specific to the implementation of physical education and sport. And I mean, there are transferable knowledge skills that can be, that can be extrapolated from that. Thanks. Graham? Um. Sitting with the working group when we put this whole uh, project together, it, it, it's exactly what everyone is talking about, Chad, yeah. and uh, especially from the Netherlands there, what you brought up, that every country has a different scenario. And, um, you know, you've got some countries that uh, the government uh, have, have put uh, a Learn to Swim program in their curriculum at school, and then there's other uh, countries that there's no Learn to Swim programs going on at, at all. So we have to address everything very differently. I think the gentleman there from, I think it was Hong Kong, I think there was a very good point what he brought up about um, incorporating uh, big uh, corporates to possibly come on board and, and work as a partner in the, in the Learn to Swim programs. Exactly what you were, you were saying there. I think there's a space for everything. Me personally, in our country, in South Africa, it's it's... It's a privately run uh, organization teaching swimming. It's got nothing to do with government or, or anybody else. Everyone runs their own private businesses. And, and I think, as you said earlier, parents and, and teachers want to get out there and teach kids to swim in that. So I think, and, then, and then you've got other countries that are developed and have got really big swim programs going that work through their federations and even some of them working with government. I, I know that in one of the states in Australia, they announced uh, that all kids at school would, would have a, a swim program at school. So um, you're right, we're dealing with a whole lot of different uh, uh, instances and uh, you know we have to try and work around it. And, but it always comes back to get government involved, get government involved. But as uh, our gentleman from Hong Kong said over there, not all governments are going to put money in. So maybe the, the partnership with the big corporates and, 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 and private sponsors and that public, uh, private participation, maybe that is one route to go. Thank you, Graham. Yeah. Come back, Andre. Uh, I'm seeing hands everywhere. I'm trying to be as fair as possible for distribution. Uh, um, and I haven't forgotten any hand that's going up, but several have gone up. We'll see how we can accommodate everybody. Uh, Harold first. Yes, we got, got a few more. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ramsamy. What we've heard so far, uh, I think uh, the initiative uh, from FINA are really impressive, right? And uh, the uh, support of uh, President Maglioni. However, in our technological era, I would consider it to be the software side. Now, the hardware side would be the aquatic facilities provided to be able to run all these programs. 
And here I would join our friends from Algeria and Alan from South Africa in making again an appeal to FINA to really support this initiative of financing the construction of swimming facilities. I do understand the concern of President Maglione regarding that government should be involved. My suggestion is we need to find a tripartite agreement between FINA, IOC having the finance, government, local government, and national federation. This triangular cooperation under a tripartite agreement probably could be a solution to make this project go faster by providing the infrastructure. So I would like to make this recommendation for consideration to FINA Bureau. Secondly, we tend to think that there is only FINA National Federation. Everybody knows G2G, B2B, but what about G2NF, which means Government to National Federation? Now, we had the chance in Mauritius to make it happen with the Australian government under the Australian High Commission in Mauritius, who accepted to finance an OSWIM course in Mauritius, and that took place a few months back. So again, this is probably something for all the national federations to consider. Do go to your uh, different embassies and do find out whether there are possibilities for financing under the Learn to Swim and Water Safety. Thank you. Thank you, Al. President, you are OK? Again. Justin? Sam, I, I, I might have a go at this infrastructure question again, if I, if I may, because I, I agree with uh, Dr. Maglioni that um, building shiny new aquatic facilities in context of some of these nations um, really does need some thought and consideration and, and definitely the support of government and also the economic model to sustain um, the things like water quality, safety and security. Um, my story on this is when we first went to Bangladesh in about 2003 uh, in Dakar, we were looking for a training venue to train teachers to teach children and we went to the first aquatic facility that was built for the Asian Games in the 1980s. A uh, very large tank pool, 50 metres. Um, and that pool had about 10 inches of water in it. That was the muddiest water and the greenest water you've ever seen. Um, and so our first training course was in the deep end of their national aquatic facility. But in Dakar, they did not have the resources um, to maintain the plant and equipment that was supposed to keep that fully compliant. And so the next week, we went to the second international aquatic facility in Dhaka that was built for the Asian Games in the, in the 1990s. Again, this one had a warm-up pool and a diving pool and a diving board, um, but the plant and equipment had broken down. And so the only way that they could put uh, clean water in this particular aquatic facility was to drain it every three and a half weeks and fill it up with new water. And so after five years or so, the government of Bangladesh prioritized the resources to uh, replace the plant and equipment, and now it, it looks like a great swimming pool. But the point is that I, I do think that if this is about swimming for life, it's actually about teaching children swimming and water safety, the types of facilities required here are very different to the conversations that you might be having if your focus is on coaching great Olympic swimmers. And I think the distinction needs to be made in the program. And equally, um, he, he, the, uh, Dr. Maglione's um, work here um, should support um, the types of facilities that will help children learn to swim. And Graham's made a very important point here, is in many countries, this is not government driven, it's private sector. And there are small businesses all over the world running Learn to Swim. We saw a presentation from Mirtha, uh, Water Babies in China, that aims to do 200 uh, private sector pools in China. So I think if we're talking about pools, 
Um, I appreciate the pressure for uh, competitive swimming pools, but we may need to think outside the box, get parents involved perhaps in prioritising swimming at a community level and building the right types of venues. Thanks, Jess. There was one hand at the back there. Unfortunately, I see the seat's empty now, so they probably thought I'm not going to ask them to speak and they've left. Sorry about that. My apologies, wherever you are now. Come back here. And then after that, Andre, and then uh, uh, it's Tracy, is it? Martini. After that? Martini. Yeah, no, uh, okay, we have to. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, congratulations uh, to FINA for this very, very important. But uh, keep you up now. Yeah. We're running out of time. So sure. may I propose that uh, or appeal to you, to all the speakers, uh, shorten your, your presentations. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, two, ha I wear two hats. One is an Olympic swimmer who's passionately driving uh, to make a billion people in India swim safely and correctly. Uh, a point we have is, in some of our cases, government has built facilities. We've had a gap of quality teachers. And that's what we've been working on, bridging the gap of quality teachers. Uh, and like the uh, friend from Mauritius pointed out, even we've been beneficiaries of working with an organization from Australia called Oswim, uh, where we've been training teachers in India. Uh, and that's what we found triggers the change, both from a swimming and water safety perspective in the community. And that is, uh, my request would be, can we, alongside coaches, have a recognition system for teachers? because they are very ignored in the community. They are undervalued, under-respected. And uh, if you know, we can start paying attention to them and improve the outcomes there, I'm sure the whole swimming community will benefit from that. Uh, I also wear a hat in India as uh, sitting on the skilling sector board for sport, fitness, uh, uh, and physical education. And from that angle, there is also a request to, when you're considering your standards, to keep in context how it could align with government skilling programs that are now becoming more globalized and standardized, which will also make it easier for government to adopt these roles and uh, make e effective implementation. Thank you. Right. Uh, first, your first question has been answered by Graham already. So we look at your second question. Now, I can, we're running out of time because we need to summarize too very quickly. Uh, so, only two more uh, quest, uh, uh, hands. That's Andre, and then after that, Tracy. Finish. That's the last two questions. Andre, Tracy. Sorry about that. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, uh, dear panelists. That uh, I like to emphasize that. Uh, my, my speech, short speech, I try to be very short, that uh, is related to the National Federation's role in this project. Because we have to understand all that this project, it is opportunity for us, for National Federations. This is first of all, this opportunity provided by FINA. And our role here is to use this with our initiative. Initiative must be uh, grown from down, must be born from down, and we have to uh, as has been emphasized by panelists, that uh, the most important thing, initiatives to go to the governments. It's very important. That's without our initiative, it is impossible to sit and wait from FINA something. FINA uh, last year provided us a lot. FINA provided us uh, uh, financial support. FINA provided us uh, big projects like uh, this project, and which give us big opportunity. And uh, my, uh, to, to finalize the speech that uh, why government is important in this project. Governments, it is our insurance. If we involve government in this, we have full legal base on, uh, to, to develop uh, swimming for safety because the UNESCO, uh, uh, UNESCO Convention is uh, the country which ratified it. It's fully legally based uh, for this project. In this case, uh, the ladies and gentlemen, I uh, address this to you that we have to be more initiative and in our role to initiate, to coordinate, and to, uh, uh, to, to build a good relationship with the government. Thank you. Thank, thank you, uh, Andre. Tracy, last question, and then we'll just wind up because we actually the time allocated to us is only three more minutes. 
Um, I'm Tracy Dorman from Zimbabwe. I'd like to know, with the allocation, the proposal from FINA for money for two in, uh, facilities over each year, where are we in progress on that in terms of the money being available and in terms of the guidelines, the specific guidelines which um, federations would need to be able to access that money for facilities? Thank you, Tracy. President, ball is in your court. We are working, we decide to provide swimming pool in the country that don't have swimming pool. And uh, we are working in connection with the IOC, with the Olympic Solidarity, with the Continental Organization. And uh, we go to do about the infrastructure, but we need, in all the case, the support of the government. With the government, we don't can do nothing. If the government don't maintain the pool, don't have professor, we can provide the, not professor, instructor of swimming, we can provide many things, but if the government don't say, I go to support this program, it is impossible. But we want to do the best. Thank you, President. Now, just to wind up, other points that were raised very quickly. Point one, again, as President Maglioni has said, the guarantee is there. Now, of course, um, uh, FINA office will send out applications in the new year uh, with the uh, uh, criteria for the application for all countries to fill in. Uh, uh, if they request uh, application for swimming pools, not only for swimming pools, don't ask for Olympic sized swimming pool because as soon as you ask for that, uh, uh, that particular application will be put into a file called the waste paper basket. Uh, but uh, uh, a, a, a simple, modified swimming pools where we can teach swimming. Secondly, it, uh, the uh, president has emphasized in previous. Uh, uh, meetings that we do provide facilities, help where uh, we need uh, certain types of equipment for dams, for uh, uh, slow flowing rivers and uh, lakes and even open water. So that particular program will continue. So that is something you need to again apply to FINA and it goes into the president's um, uh, box and he will attend to all of that. Now, other points that were raised was the issue of sustainability. And of course, we need to make sure that whenever uh, facilities are built, that they are sustained. You know, in the motor industry, most people call that after sales, after sales service. And that is what we need in facilities. That is where most of the facilities fail, simply because we don't know what to do after the swimming pool is built. Sometimes there are basic uh, needs that are required and uh, you know we know what happened for instance in uh, Rio in one of the swimming pools um, there was not enough uh, uh, chlorine available so you know the water turned green there so we must make sure basic facilities like that facial equipment like that is always available one must be very careful with partnership partnerships are very very important and uh, we need to make sure that they don't collapse halfway. And this again, we need to be very careful because some of the sponsors, they'll sponsor you for, for, uh, for three years when the program should go on for five years. And they say, look, uh, um, uh, our business is waning. We can't continue with that. And then the, that particular uh, uh, um, facility becomes a, 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 a dereliction. We need to be careful whenever you're looking at partnership, what type of partnership. One person emphasized, I think it was Ronnie, about parental involvement. Now, there are other sports where parental involvement is very, very good. And I think that's also very important because I know in certain parts of the world that there are very, very wealthy parents um, available with a fair amount of money. And I'm certain that they can contribute 
uh, towards building of facilities. Not necessarily a, a, a swimming pool, but uh, building safety uh, facilities or learn to swim facilities in dams, in rivers, lakes, and open water. Um, and again, we all talked about uh, um, the, the government corporate sector involvement. And I, that is something, again, when you're looking at uh, building facilities, make sure that this particular uh, uh, combination uh, is a workable combination because we also have governments halfway through they say, look, we don't have any money for this. So we need to be careful and that is why President Manglioni emphasized the importance of government because they are the only ones, not necessarily at national level, right up to municipal level, they are the ones who can really carry it forward because they have what is called taxpayers' money. And, and again, of course, Eric, I think he emphasized about one size does not fit everybody. And that again, I think we need to all look at it and emphasize that particular point. But most importantly, I'm certain that there are many other points that you would like to bring up to FINA and we'll greatly appreciate it. If you've got some excellent ideas, drop FINA a note and we'll look into it. And if there's any, assist, any type of assistance we can provide, we'll certainly uh, uh, consider that as favorably as possible. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, most importantly, we hope the uh, session was inspirational. And uh, we hope to meet you shortly again uh, with more facilities available. Next time we have a, a program like this, let's hear this is what we've done and this is what is working. Thank you very much, everybody.